when you walk by faith, you automatically shut down the leverage of evildoers and also the leverage of those that enable evil. There's no way for you to walk by faith and not challenge the powers that be, as they are called by worldly people. So, when you walk by faith, you shut down the leverage of evildoers, which is violence. And when you shut down violence around you, what are they left with? This is what I mean by shutting down violence. I'm talking about structures that are enforced on people that keep them in danger. Let's say you have a parent that thinks he has a right to harm his own children because he's the parent. Or you have a boss who thinks he has a right to exploit his employees. Or you have people who think that they have a right to dislike someone or they have a right to think bad about someone. People without Christ have all types of attachments and entitlements holding on to. Most of those entitlements cannot be accounted for. As long as they can be relieved from having to, to face themselves, they are happy. And that's why they submit to violence and they enable violence just to be left alone. The moment you come around and you refuse that violence, they're not worried because they think that violence will deal with you. But once the, the violence has been unleashed against you and the violence doesn't harm you, nor does it shut you down, what's going to happen? Now the violence against you is destroying itself. And this will embarrass everyone who relies on that violence. For example, you may be at work and co-workers are talking about your back. They really want you to be fired. They want you gone. They lie about you. They take action against you to make you feel uncomfortable. And what happens? You're still coming to your workplace and even the boss can't fire you because he feels he is frightened to do that. So now not only are you still left with that job, but you're also taking over at the workplace without having the formal position. It is, as, it is as if the company now is dependent on you, even though you don't even have a high position in the company. And now they can't explain what's going on because there's power coming out of you and they can't ask you to leave. Because if they ask you to leave, they'll be exposing their anger towards you. And when they expose their anger against you, now they need to explain it and they can't explain it. So that will be a humiliation onto them. But they keep coming to work, facing you, that will also fix their humiliation. And now they need to comply with their own humiliation that they cost to themselves. So what are they going to do now? If they all stay away from the workplace, they have no income. So now they're stuck. What happened here? Evildoers and those that enable evil lost their leverage. What's going to happen when they lose their leverage? They'll escalate. They will escalate. Just look at Pharaoh. In the Old Testament, when his leverage was shut down, he knew he had to comply with justice, letting the Israelites go. He didn't want to do it. He escalated. The Egyptians that supported their leader also escalated. When, by necessity, he had to comply with letting the Israelites go and Israelites left, he even went after them to kill them all. So he escalated. He became suicidal. He rather perish than living every day with reality that his will was challenged. Just think about the Adamites. When the Israelites were delivered from Egypt and they had to pass through territory where Adamites lived, the territory did not belong to the Adamites because the whole earth belongs to the Lord and it was the Lord that freed the Israelites. So the Israelites didn't even have, didn't even have to inform the Edomites who were passing through, quote unquote, their land. They only informed them. And what ha and Moses even made plain that he would not take advantage of the Edomites. The Edomites responded with hostility. Why did they do that? Because they had no leverage anymore over the Israelites. When the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, they had a leverage over them. They could play Uncle Tom with the Egyptians. Now that the Israelites were at the top, they had the money and Egypt was broken, the Adamites now had to face how they treated the Israelites. And they didn't want to face how they treated the Israelites because now they need to explain themselves and they can't explain themselves. And look at this, the Israelites are in advantage. So the Israelites are now able to take action against them for their neglect and how they treated them in the past. So the Adamites as a group escalated in full rage. 
and full violence against the Israelites. And for the generations that came, the Edomites retained this cultural hostility against the Israelites. Anytime the Israelites later in history were in trouble, the Edomites joined their enemies. That is how deep it went. Evildoers lost their leverage. When Christ went back to Nazareth, and he now was this great teacher that even performed miracles, the people from his hometown had narcissistic relief because in their mind Christ was the illegitimate child of Mary because they didn't believe the story of the virgin birth. The story of the virgin birth does make sense biologically and nobody can blame them, but they didn't believe that. They just believed Mary was sleeping around and that Joseph married uh, a hoe kind. I'm just saying it as it is. So they had this bad uh, opinion of, of Jesus already. When Christ became older and he left Capernaum, he went to look for a job. So they thought, okay, this guy goes out to look for a job. he probably get a job in an apartment, but that's it. We here are married. We here have children. We are the respected people. They had this good feeling about themselves collectively and individually at Christ's expense. When Christ returned and this image he had in their head about him was shattered, now they had to face reality. Now they had to face why they needed to look down on him to begin with. So now they had to face the facts of themselves. And the one they victimized with their opinions was now there in their face. And he was able to challenge them. What happened? They turned on him. They escalated on him. There was attempted murder. Even men of Christ's relatives were also quote unquote benefited from the narcissistic relief at the Christ's expense also turned on him. They lost their leverage, so they escalated. When Christ went to Gadara to free the two demon-possessed men who were possessed with legions, the evil spirits knew it was useless to resist. Evil spirits complied. The evil spirits even begged for mercy, and Christ showed mercy to evil spirits. By the way, that was Christ then. I'm not saying we should do that, but that's what Christ did because he's the Lord. And the mercy that Christ showed to the evil spirits was to return the violence on the community because the community committed violence against those two men and now the evil spirits went into the into the herd of swine and herd of swine died now this economic loss was not compared to what should have happened to the community actually those demons should return to the community and cause havoc over there but christ in his mercy towards the human beings Showed mercy to the demons to allow the demons to go into the swine and to kill the swine. Christ could have told them, go back to your senders and, uh, and finish them off. Christ could have said that. Christ didn't do it. But Christ did send the demons back to their senders. In this case, the demons needed to have human beings alive in the negative. So the evil spirits really were tricking Christ into assisting them. Christ allowed the demons to think he was assisting them by allowing them to go into the herd of swine, but Christ already worked out he would use that incident to glorify himself. So Christ did send the violence back to its senders in such a way that the senders had some chance to, to repent. What happened? The senders, aka that community that operated in negative, did not appreciate what Christ did, shutting down their leverage. Seeing the herd of swine dead was a sign that that is what would have happened to them. But the Lord considered them enough to offer them a way out. What did they do? They knew that Christ was superior. They knew that this man couldn't be challenged. So what did he do? They escalated. They began to beg Christ to leave them alone. We couldn't openly say to him, leave, we don't want you around here. They couldn't do it openly because they knew by triggering Christ, they could face worse consequences because they knew what happened to the herd of swine, that, they, that the swine destroyed themselves completely. That should have happened to them. But they now preferred that they would have destroyed themselves than to submit unto the rule of Christ, where they would be held accountable, where they had to face themselves and comply with justice. Christ left. Why? Because the people already saw what would happen if they continue in the negative and it still persisted. So what happened? Christ handed them over to destroy themselves. Christ did not destroy them. 
so that other reprobates on the earth could not play the victim. No, Christ didn't give them ammunition to play the victim and to blackmail others. Christ handed them over to destroy themselves. He shook the dust off his feet and the same thing believers ought to do. We ought to enforce repercussions. We ought to do all of that. And the moment they persist despite the repercussions, we shake the dust off our feet because from that point on, heaven itself will release spiritual airstrikes on them if they go way out of hand. The same as what, as what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I'm not saying that, again, fire will come down from heaven and destroy them, but heaven will respond in one way or the other when they persist despite repercussions. When Paul and Silas were in Macedonia and they were haunted by this slave girl who was a witch, they cast out evil spirit out of her that harassed them. Paul did not attack the slave girl, he, had, he dealt with evil spirit inside of her and evil spirit left. When the woman returned to her slave owners, the slave owners could have just put another evil spirit inside of her. But what was it that angered them? What angered them was the fact that there was an alternative. There was someone there with bigger power. And those people with bigger po power had no reluctance to use that power. So they lost their leverage as witch doctors, as warlocks. So what happened? They escalated it, escalated it, caused civil unrest throughout the city. And they blamed Paul and Silas for it. And the commoners, because there was unrest and they didn't want to figure out what was going on, they didn't want to face anything, they joined the unrest against Paul and Silas and Paul and Silas ended in jail. There, the Holy Spirit worked out in such a way that the prison or the, the jail broke down and they could walk away freely. You know the story. Just realize, anytime evildoers lose their leverage, they escalate. And if they can't escalate directly towards you, they'll take down someone else. That is why a lot of people don't want you to challenge the status quo. A lot of people don't want you to look for freedom. A lot of people don't want you to be free. They don't want you to be delivered. Because your deliverance will trigger outbursts of anger somewhere from someone. The fact alone that you dare to want to be free and want to be prosperous already triggers angry and bitter reactions in some. Because now they have no excuse. Now they are forced to face themselves. And when they are forced to face themselves, now they also need to make effort not to face themselves. And sooner or later this pain will escalate and they'll explode. When evildoers lose their leverage, others will pay the price with harm. They'll escalate, whether directly with, fis with physical weapons, or with a physical fist or whatever, or they will do it through policies, they will escalate. And they don't care whether it harms them directly or not, they will escalate. They can't bear the idea that they're, that they're challenged successfully in East. When you go further throughout the New Testament, you will see clearly that any time evildoers lose their leverage, explosions happen. And this is why revolutions seldom work. Because in revolutions, the people have enough and they go on the streets and show they have enough. And what happens now is that this gives the local evil authorities a chance to escape. And that's why revolutions seldom work out because there are also evildoers and enablers amongst the protesters. And those enablers and evildoers are only against the local authorities because it hinders their selfish pursuits. The moment the, the quote-unquote evil authorities are gone, those same enablers and evildoers of the common people, they now will turn on the people. Now they will fight others to get their leverage. Listen, believer. Do not think that you will get away with being free without a fight. The world around you will not tolerate it. They will not. Some, when they see that you openly the fight, the violence around you, into, into their face, and that you will not comply with their blackmail, what will happen? They'll begin to harm themselves just to blame you. Anytime they see you, they get triggered, and now they move away. You may be in, a, in the underground, as said in Britain or 
other people say metro you may be in the metro and someone who's against you who can stand you is there but because you've challenged violence in a spiritual way and you're successful when they see you they step outside of the metro because they can't bear being in the same room which you seeing you at ease and they're the ones triggered and they're the ones escalating on the inside and escalation is harming them not you they can't bear this so they step out and because of that they're late for work they get a warning and they're, and they're all, and they almost lose their job what's going to happen they're going to blame you that you had to leave that mentor if though it's them that chose to have a negative attitude against you and it's their own negative attitude that backfired on them so it's them that have, they need to be angry on themselves they'll blame it on you or you may have people a whole group of people that may play the victim just to get rid of you and when they can't get rid of you they even escalate and, and attack one another and they blame you for the fact they're attacking one another there was once in the new testament where the judean persecutors of paul went to a roman judge and the roman judge made plain i'm not going to be involved with this and he even began to harm one of their own in front of the judge and the judge just walked away he knew what was going on he knew that these people were only using him to escalate so he removed himself from the case because he knew that if he got involved as a judge and things would escalate rome would come after him so he realized oh, i'm not getting involved with this so that pagan judge was far wiser than many believers are today because many believers today they're sucked into the violence without being aware of what's going on so anytime you walk by faith anytime you send peace ahead of you anytime you enforce repercussions on evildoers around you anytime you express yourself artistically anytime you operate in freedom and your natural autonomy you are shutting down the leverage of evildoers around you and that will always bring retaliation don't expect to get away with being free without a fight now when you walk by faith in christ will overcome the fight against you not by fighting them but by outsmarting them they'll be fighting amongst themselves eventually and you will be free off the hook and off harms just realize that there are people who are just reprobates they're bitter against reality bitter against christ and they refuse to be saved so what's left for them self-destruction and now they want others to join their ministry for them to be at ease and they'll fight for this yes they will they'll fight for their right to victimize and harm others just to be relieved because their relief is all that matters believer anticipate retaliation against you by outsmarting the wolves in around you christ said i sent you as sheep amongst wolves so you didn't put yourself in trouble christ did by sending you as sheep amongst wolves why because you have to victory to overcome and shut down the dangers around you and there will still be violence around you of reprobates escalating but that's not your fault even if they escalate because you shut down the leverage it's not your fault they're escalating it shouldn't escalate but what you can do and should do is outsmart them so if you know that retaliation would come make sure you're ahead of the retaliation so that when retaliation happens the harm or the shock caused by the retaliation will be as minimum as possible knowing that there are wolves in sheep's clothing that will never repent yes wolves in sheep's clothing so keep walking by faith and agree with christ